Fortnite, like many other games, has the added element of RNG. But in Fortnite, many people let this ruin their mindset and their entire game. When it comes to competitive Fortnite, this is where everything seems to fall apart. Then they blame the game for their mistakes. They blame Epic. My name is Dan, and in this video, we're going to cover the best and optimal ways to survive the early game and turn RNG in your favor. And when you're done checking out this video, the best way to put them into practice is with one of our Instapro coaches. Head over to ProGuys.com and check out Instapro. In the average Fortnite game, more than 50% of the lobby will die out before the first zone even closes. This isn't a big shock, considering that almost everyone lands hot. That's the reason most players are unable to make it past the early game. In fact, most people think of surviving the early game and combating RNG as playing safe. Not true. It's very possible to land hot and still have a great game, as we've seen in many instances with pro players in the World Cup. In this video, we'll cover three main subjects when it comes to combating RNG, and those are choosing a great landing spot, best way to drop, early game tips and tricks. Now, when we talk about defeating RNG, we don't mean completely annihilating it, because that wouldn't be possible. But there are many ways to reduce it, making RNG not as impactful to your overall game. We'll be discussing high-level tactics and strategy that will hopefully help you guys progress to that next level. Number 1. Choosing a great landing spot Where do the majority of players get stuck? Usually the most difficult decision early game is choosing where to land. This is the ultimate decision that probably decides your entire game. People have no idea how crucial it is to get a good landing spot. When it comes to controlling your landing spot, we have a couple of essentials to go over here. You can't completely control the weapons you get upon landing. What you do have control over though is where you drop, and that's why this is our most important topic. You've probably noticed that many top players land repetitively in the same spots. That's because when you have scattered drops most of the time, you don't know the terrain and layout well enough and are therefore more susceptible to RNG. The best way to minimize RNG in this regard is to pick a landing spot that's the most optimal for you. Now, what do I mean? Well, everybody's different. Landing in the same spot as your favorite streams, that might not go as planned. Plus, every drop spot streamers land is likely to be infested with players. I mean, if you had your eyes on that spot, I'm sure a hundred others did too, right? So go into public matches, pick a spot that's best for you, and start practicing the drops there. Ideally, you want to pick a location that has access to decent rotation options, such as slip streams and ballers. And if the location doesn't have many rotational devices, you should want it to be close to the center of the map. That way, you don't get caught up having to rotate all the way across the map. Now, another important step is that you want a location that's known to have more chests and viable loot. One thing I've noticed many of the World Cup qualifiers have is consistent loot. I've almost never seen them running around with a gray tactical shotgun and no shield. They manage this by knowing their drop spots super thoroughly. If you're a really good player, you can probably get away with dropping anywhere you want on the map at any given time. But the problem with this approach is that even the best of the best fall victim to RNG in these situations. But when you solidify your drop spot to the point where you know it inside and out, that's when RNG no longer becomes a problem. Because you know if your enemy grabs a certain area, there are a few other nearby places you can go to. It no longer becomes RNG. You become in control of your own game. A great example of this would be E11 Stompy, a seven-time World Cup qualifier who clearly wasn't held back by RNG. You don't qualify seven times from luck. His favorite spot is Frosty Flight, as you can see from this screenshot. Also, note this was a tweet back in late March, and he still lands there today. If you notice when Stompy lands there, he always goes for the same spot. He knows the layout and how to get there fastest. Thus, he always emerges victorious. After he grabs a weapon, he's free to full push another opponent. He's also mapped out the chest spawns, shield locations, and other floor loot, so he has this place in his back pocket. Most pro players have solid landing spots and know the layout and spawns super well. They know what altitude to drop from to get there first, they know the chest and floor loot spawn, and they know which buildings are best. This is why if you've watched in the World Cup, 99% of the time these qualifiers have a good loadout. The advantage of dropping in the best possible spot in your area is huge. You'll have so many more shields, weapons, and utility. Get to know your landing spot. So the goal is to get to know your landing spot really well and know the best area to drop in for you. Have a backup plan in case the enemy drops there first. Know where all the fights break out and what exactly you can do to combat it. Now on to the best ways to drop. Now this next question has been asked, well, a lot. I'm sure you guys are wondering what happens in a situation where I do all of the above and still get into a sticky situation early game. I have a bad weapon and the enemy has a shotgun. Well, this happens to all of us as much as we'd hate to admit it. 
The goal is to, well, you know, not get into this situation. If you know your landing spot well enough, you will usually get to the landing spot first and have the good weapons. But in that small occasion that the enemy gets there first, your first and primary goal should be to veer off and resort to plan B. If you've clearly missed out on a good landing spot, you should not land in the same building. Reason being, the enemy will most likely push you after he grabs a weapon, causing you to fumble and end up dying. So as I said, having good knowledge of your land spot will help you out in this situation, because every landing spot has multiple buildings to land at. Also, many POIs have different buildings and terrain. While some floor loot and chest loot may be RNG, there are certain areas or spots where you're guaranteed a shotgun. For example, POIs with a lot of loot include Paradise Palms Main Tower, the Main House in Fatal Fields, or the Cathedral at Haunted Hills. But don't only focus on possible loot. When landing, you probably don't want to land at very populated buildings, because the chances of getting third-partied are quite high. But here's a trick if you end up landing with a lot of enemies. Place a pyramid and edit them into a ramp to block the windows. I've noticed quite a few players doing this, and it's quite useful in not getting lasered from the windows. So we're on to our final example. What happens when you get into a situation where you're in a building with an enemy and he has a shotgun and you don't? Yo, wait. Please. I'm going to keep it a V-buck with you. I'm dead. Yeah, I to say that. I'm crazy. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yo, hey. Oh my god. Okay, yo, yo, hey, right here. Hello. Hello. We've seen this happen over and over. Now, there are two possible decisions you can make. First, you're forced into a fight, or you can disengage if possible. If you take a fight against a better player without a shotgun, the chances for you to win without any sort of utility items are very slim. Imagine fighting yourself just with a better loadout. Not gonna happen. There aren't many things you can do in a pistol versus shotgun early game fight, so that's why I advise you to take the tips I've mentioned above so that you can bypass that whole situation. That usually only occurs to people who take risky 50-50 landing fights, or people who land very close to other players. Now, let's head on to our last topic, early game tips and tricks. Everybody loves tips and tricks, so we're going to give you guys some general techniques that you can use to win the early games. In arena and tournament matches, a majority of the early games come down to whoever has the best drop at the best buildings. Taking 50-50 drops are very dangerous and therefore not recommended, especially in high-level matches. But if you're losing all your early game engagements and want to get better, best advice for you is to hop into public or arena match, drop hot, and work on getting your box fighting skills up. All early game fights resort to box fights, and the winner is often determined by who has better aim. There are various creative courses called Turtle Wars dedicated to helping you improve in those areas, so hop into those with a friend and practice. Another common issue is making plays off impulse and not reasoning. Taking fights that have literally zero point shouldn't be pursued and don't produce any effective results. A great example would be getting a white pistol and no shield and then pushing an opponent while on 20 health after you've gotten lasered. Instead of making a foolish play like that, back away and go recover some health. Live to fight another day. Another tip is utilizing your loadout effectively. We discussed this in a previous video and we recommend that you guys go check that out. If you get grenades, use them to pressure your opponents. If you get a flintlock, use it to gain momentum. There are so many different ways to utilize what you have and sometimes we don't even know what we can do. The aim is probably the most important of them all. Why? Well, you can offset a lot of building and editing skills with accurate and lethal shots. Also, in the early game, many players don't have materials and are forced into dogfights. It's also okay to play more defensively. You don't need to engage right away, but one of the main things is that you need to make sure you have a shield before entering a fight. The best of the best usually only engage after securing some shield and a shotgun. If you need to take a fight, take it. If not, don't be afraid to back away. Remember, you need to be alive to win the game. Alright guys, we hope you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, we hope that you guys have a better idea of how to avoid eliminations due to RNG. Don't let that get to your head, and play smart. There's always ways that you can improve your situation. Let us know what you guys would like to learn about next, and you can follow me at, at Daniel Lammerman, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video guys. Bye!